In recent years, Nigeria has made significant strides to strengthening its democratic institutions. Now, the 2023 elections marked a pivotal moment with millions of Nigerians exercising their right to vote. However, challenges persist. Issues like electoral violence, corruption and ethnic tensions continue to pose threats to the nation's democratic process. Despite these challenges, Nigeria remains committed to the democratic path. Citizens are engaged and civil society organizations play a vital role in advocating for accountability and transparency. While Nigeria's democracy faces hurdles, it continues to evolve with citizens and leaders working to build a more inclusive and stable democratic future. I'm now joined uh, live by Eugene Abels, a good governance advocate and also executive director, the Extra Step Initiative. Thank you so much for your time, Eugene. Thank you for having me. All right, let's get straight to it. How would you assess the overall health of Nigeria's democratic institutions? And of course, taking into account uh, recent elections and political developments. Well, for me, um, it's been, we successfully done this for 23 years. It's quite commendable. And um, yes, it's not been perfect. It's not been El Dorado. But I just like, I just like us to change the conversation in the sense that um, the American Constitution has been amended 27 times plus. And uh, so for every anomaly we have faced, particularly for the ones people are pointing at currently from the last election, I think we, have, we might sometimes need to thank some of those people who have attempted to to do uh, to use gaps in our laws and and the constitution and the electoral process to their advantage, contrary to the will of the people. This enables us to act like a feedback mechanism for us to correct those things. You remember back in the past, in seventy nine, we had the twelve to third issue. We have the events and events events every matter. We have the James or James Bory matter, and now we have the Chicago matter on the table. So I'm saying that, um, yes, we have done so well in the sense that there has been no military coup or any attempt to suspend the constitution. But we need to come back with the electors and the people that we have not done well. The leader, the scholarship process have not done well because we have refused to interrogate this process. Because of this, a very particular arm of government, which is a legislator, most of us don't know them because we allow politicians to appoint them. Which is time, now that all of this is happening and people have woken up, it is important that we give set an agenda for the National Assembly to review the rules that govern how we do our leadership selection process. For instance, we need to look at how we appoint the INEC chairman who conducts the elections. And he needs to be, whoever takes up that position must be subject to public audit in the sense that if any case arises from an election that is conducted by the agency, it should not be on those alleging. It should be the duty of INEC at every tier of, government, of the judicial system to come and prove itself in court. We should be able to audit political parties and assess of funding. We should look at Membership of political parties it should be public knowledge. Don't forget to have at least seven means to identify people. Your national identity card, your BVN, your international passport, your telephone number, and um, your driving license. If we merge this, we should be able to know who belongs to what parties. Not whenever elections come, you hear issues about parties and um, um, reg uh, uh, party registers. So, it's embarrassing, 20, 23 years after. We need to stop delegated elections, whereby people use public force to insist on what will happen in political parties and in our political conversation. We must create an agenda for the National Assembly to debate these things and give them a timeline to ensure that within the next 48 months, there has to be constitutional amendments to insert these things into our constitution. There has to be financial independence for all tiers of government through the three arms of government, the federal, state, and local government. 
executive, legislature, and judiciary, even at the local government level where you have the executive, the constitutional assembly, and the customary court. There has to be clear financing purposes from the national treasury. We need to re redefine the request of, um, we need to, we need to define who should manage Nigeria, what its qualifications are. Nigeria, the states, which are subnationals, and the local governments. If we can ask young people for certificates and make them go to school, we need to enshrine this in our constitution. All right, we need Eugene. to make it compulsory. All right, Eugene. Well, I apologize, but I'll get back to you soon in a moment. Reports are just coming in, says the governorship election petition tribunal sitting in Lafayette, capital of Nasrawa State, in a split decision, sacked Governor Abdullahi Sule and declared David Omugbadu of the People's Democratic Party as winner of the election. And a ruling, ruling actually delivered moments ago, two of the justices agreed that the election was won by the PDP, while one judge dissented. Now, Mr. Sule, who stood re-election in March, polled a total of uh, 347,209 votes to defeat his closest opponent, uh, who had uh, 283,016 votes. Uh, we, of course, we will be bringing you details of this story in subsequent bulletins. All right, back to you, Eugene. I mean, that, of course, is a breaking story right now uh, coming in from, uh, uh, of course, Nassau State. How do you react to this uh, development? Um, um, we keep seeing all of this all over the place happening, and uh, I think we need to review how we do it. And um, we also need to rejig the National Judicial Council which is we act as kind of regulator of what judges do. We should be we need to inject life that we the people must begin to demand clear services from them. So that when whoever gives a ruling, people there has to be clear responsibility for the decisions you take. Now, how do we select people into the bench from the level of magistrates? Who monitors it? Because we've seen politicians are pushing relatives family people, girlfriends, and so on, but loyalists into the judicial system. And this has been going on since 1999. So a lot of things are happening. People have lost confidence in the judicial system, but um, it's still in existence, So, and we're paying for their services. So we need to ask questions and ask for a redefinition. Nation of, 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 yes. of, uh, of, of course, there are quite a number of things. Mm. But, but I, I want us to, of course, come back to the conversation uh, we, of course, uh, we, are, we are having before the breaking news. Now, what are the key challenges and opportunities that you feel Nigeria, you know, face in its ongoing effort to strengthen its democracy, particularly in terms of governance and electoral processes, such that what we're experiencing as a fallout of the last elections? Yes, we know we've had tribunal in the past, but right now it seems like more of a situation between... Uh, uh, the, the voting umpire or the results gotten at the vote and also finally the verdict of the tribunal. You know, how do we ensure that uh, all of these processes are seamless? This process can only be seamless when we change the law to make INEC accountable. It is it, because the Constitution says that who alleges should prove. So you do, you spend your resources, run for an election, and it goes to sleep. No, it should be the other way around. That if there's an anomaly, the, 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 those who conducted elections should be held accountable. We need to ensure that is enshrined in our constitution. So anybody taking up any position in that agency knows that they will be in public line and they stand to face sanctions if things are not done properly, because these are public funds that are expended. I'll give you a case, an example. If you remember in 2019, INEC came and said they wanted to go electronic and so on and so on. They needed money for to, go, to infuse the information technology into their system and so on, into the voters register and so on. But they, they knew that 
the law did not recognize electronic voting, meaning that you need to do the relevant things at the back end, which is the constitution, before you can attempt to adopt anything, even though INEC has prerogative to amend the act here and there. All right. that, that money was wasted. Yeah. All so right, we yeah. need to insist on things with the electors, with the employers of these people, must ask our National Assembly vote to set an agenda for them. They don't have a right to set an agenda for themselves. Okay. That's All right, Eugene. So important I'm, I'm... to elect the National Assembly. All right. I mean, point well delivered. Uh, but we need to go right now. We are pressed with time. Thank you so much for uh, being on the news. Uh, Eugene Abels, once again, thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for having me.